Most likely Russ will probably just block me after this video, but I think best case scenario would be if he publicly said he wasn't sexually attracted to me, which would be great, honestly, because then I would feel so much safer going to clubs in LA once lockdown is over. That's it, that's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda and you're watching Swell Entertainment and this video just kind of came about randomly. I've just been clowning this guy on Twitter a little bit so I figured I might as well make a video on it. But I don't want to give him the full energy of me doing my full usual setup so I am on the floor today. So I expect copious amounts of floor gang comments. Also TikTok is either going to get bought or banned and I figured I might as well harvest content for this channel from TikTok while it's still available. So today we were talking about TikTok's pickup artist, Russell Hartley, and why I believe he is a bad liar. Because of the nature of some of Russell's stories that I'm gonna be ripping apart, I'm fairly certain this video is gonna be demonetized, so special shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for keeping my bills paid. Russell is a pickup artist. He full on did a full seminar class show thing for a whole year, once a week, where he organized and produced everything and he brought in all these pickup artists to teach men, and according to him, some women, how to build their confidence and not be weird with women. What happened when one of my TikTok videos went viral and then anti-viral? I believe it was when Peter's season of The Bachelor was airing. Russell made a series called Being a Bachelor in Real Life. What it's like being a bachelor in real life, part five. Probably trying to hop on the good engagement of all of the Bachelor TikToks that were being made at the time with theories and things like that. I'm I'm not gonna go into detail about the misogyny and all of that in his TikToks. I think you guys can figure it out. There's plenty of other people who have talked about this and how toxic this shit is. You don't need me to reiterate that. I'm assuming you know this shit is misogynistic. His video that was duetted was one where he was specifically talking about how men, if you wanna be a bachelor in real life, you wanna have mares, women, okay, in your stable and you've got this rotation going of women because you're a bachelor, okay? You just wanna stay single for fun and you wanna have all these women you're hooking up with. So you have your mares in your stable and then when they start asking questions like, where is this going? You don't want a relationship? You just lead her out of the stable so you make room for more. She just did a duet of the TikTok holding up a sign that said, I hate men. And that's the one that ended up on my For You page. Guys, side note, when women say men are trash, they're talking about people like Russell. They're talking about guys who do shit like this. And if you are generally getting offended when you see a post like that, that's probably something you need to look in on yourself because if you're not a dick, you wouldn't be bothered. Does that make sense? Some girl said men are trash and you either assume, oh, I wonder who she's talking about or you're like, hey, fuck you. I'm not trash. Why are you getting defensive, you know? Also side note on the side note, if you do see posts like that or you do see comments like that and you react to that with more hostility as a male, other women are gonna see that and see that as a red flag. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> Russell at one point worked for a major company, then he started doing his course uh, or his weekly shows or whatever where he taught men how to have more confidence and pick up women. And now I believe he makes most of his money from doing these online courses. If I go to his website, it says, Russell Hartley, producer, author, coach. Here's how I can help. How to text a girl and not get ghosted for the boys. How to be confident and develop high self-esteem for everyone. Uh, Russell? I, I'm a girl, I'm into girls. Can I not take the how to, can I not take the how to text a girl and not get ghosted? Other people can have dicks as well, not just boys. But um, if it's just sending like a dick pic, like that won't work. <laughs> Side note, um, the how to text a girl one has a word of warning. You will be seeing real texting examples. I want you to know upfront that there are a few things that we won't tolerate. Using these strategies to manipulate women, they're that powerful. Telling women about these hacks, they won't work anymore if everyone knows about them. Using any nudes you receive as blackmail. Ooh, should I take the course and review it? Russell posts a variety of content onto TikTok. He posts some videos of him reacting to his fans' DMs on Tinder. He posts some videos showing off what he's wearing and the brand names. Some people put in my comments like, oh bro, get a suit that fits you, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what? You, look at that. Look at the look at my back line. Are you kidding me? I'm the king of this shit. Are you kidding me? Uh, anyways, guys, this is Prada head to toe, as you can see there, uh, Prada. I live in and grew up in Orange County, as in Real Housewives of Orange County. Living here, I've learned quite a few things about people's wealth. First and foremost, um, if anyone has real money, they usually don't flaunt how much money they have typically. Sure, they'll have toys and shit, like nice cars, whatever, but it's not something they have to constantly flaunt. Like, you'll notice that they're carrying a Louis Vuitton bag, but they're not gonna flash it. Like, look what I just got. Typically, people who do flaunt the expensive purchase 
purchases, flaunt the brand names or whatever, are people who are new money and don't fully know what to do with it yet. So they're just kind of spending it on whatever, or they're incredibly deep into debt and they are trying to convince you that they are not into debt because they think that everyone can tell. Do I think he's in debt? Probably not. Especially Russell did this TikTok because someone was like, why don't you get a suit that fits you? And he's like flexing the back line and like how tailored it is. Prada, Prada, my shoes aren't Prada, but they're this like, Dude, <laughs> you gotta stop. But what inspired me to sit down to make this video today is some of his posts talking about some of the women he's been with and the multi episode stories that he posts on his TikTok. Before I get into ripping apart some of his lies and his stories, everyone gets annoyed when I give the people I talk about advice, but it's not like any of them are actually gonna take my advice, so it's fine. Um, but Russell, you really gotta stop posting these videos of you like standing in the background while these girls are dancing. I'm sure you think you look like a baller or something, but really you just look like a background character in a Brazzers video. Like your wife is the one getting it on with the mailman while you watch from a distance. It doesn't look nearly as cool as you think it does. But anyway, first series of his that inspired this video and made me want to go through a bunch of other shit to see if I could catch anything else was his Hard Nose in the Bedroom series. Hard Nose in the Bedroom, an anthology. Typically Hard Nose in the Bedroom refer to things that, you know, someone just doesn't want to do in the bedroom sexually. That's really it. That can really be anything. Someone doesn't like being tied up, someone doesn't like role playing, etc. You know, it's not hard to figure out. His Hard Nose in this series aren't really hard nose in the traditional sense. Um, the first one is like concerning. As a woman, I was concerned for the woman he was talking about. I'm calling this one Slippery Jimmy. In summary, the 60 second video is about how he was going down on a girl that he picked up and he found a condom inside of her vagina. If you've seen the movie Love Rosie, yes, it's like that. I wasn't quite sure what it was at first, so I did this little pincer move and pulled out a used condom. Hard no! First and foremost, people with penises, be realistic about what size sock your friend needs. Second off, let's talk about the embellishment. If this were true, this would be a very short story. I met this girl, I took her home, and anyway, found out that she had just hooked up with someone else and there was a condom inside her vagina. Or for those of you that have never lied before, when your lie has too much detail, it's pretty clear it's a lie. So one Sunday afternoon, I'm at a pretty popular beachside bar in Santa Monica called The Bungalow. Russell doesn't just tell you that he was at a bar in Santa Monica. No, he tells you it was a Sunday and it was a beachside bar called The Bungalow in Santa Monica. And he doesn't live out there, but he likes to go down there because it's a great place to meet women. And I'm there alone. I'm day drinking as one does. I don't live in Santa Monica, but it's a great place to go to meet women. There's a couple colleges there. Everybody goes there on Sundays. It's a pretty popping spot. Now he's already told us he's day drinking but he has to remind us that by saying he's tipsy and so were the four college age girls that he approached because already he made it clear that there was colleges in the area so it was a great place to go and get drunk. Now I'm already a little tipsy and so were the four college girls that I approached but one of them we had a special connection and we decided to abandon her friends and leave together. This one I honestly thought was probably a little bit more realistic because typically when he lies he makes a comment about the girls ethnicity and then he reminds us again he doesn't live in Santa Monica and luckily for him her roommates are out of town. Now I live far away and her roommates were out of town so it was a perfect opportunity to get a tour of her apartment. They start a tour but it doesn't last long before her legs are around his ears. And as I'm taking care of business I got a faint taste of latex. Hey Russell how do you know what latex tastes like? But what am I gonna do? Stop? Get angry and call her a player? Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. So whatever, I'm still gonna get some mines. Mama didn't raise no quitter. And then he has to remind you again that he has sex with a lot of women. What am I gonna do? Call her a player? That's the pot calling the kettle black. <laughs> and then he gets into detail about how he pulled out the condom and that's a hard no. Hard no! You could have just called this one like a crazy sex story, but then I guess you wouldn't be able to do hard no, which is like how he ends all of these. But anyway, let's go to the next one. I'm calling this this one, something's a little fishy. Now his hard no in this story is that he met a girl, brought her home, and she had a yeast infection. But of course, it's a hard no story, so he has to tell you the full setup. So let's talk about how the story is probably bullshit. This one I met on a dating app, and at the time I was using plenty of fish. And boy, was I fishing. <laughs> I matched with this beautiful Latina girl. You know, sometimes I go south of the border. And some of you guys might not know this, but I'm an absolute professional on dating apps, for real. Like I said, he points out the girl's ethnicity. He doesn't just tell you that he met her on a dating site. He tells you the dating site, plenty of fish. And he also has to tell you about how he was fishing because he was a master at dating sites. He goes on to say, we went to this one place and everyone knew me because he was such a baller. He brought all these women all the time that everyone has to know him. And I had this whole routine. I'd meet this girl at Studio City and Firefly. All the bartenders and managers knew me. They always like saw me with new girls 
all the time, but nobody says anything, you know, it's all good. Boys will be boys. And everybody that worked there would like come up and talk to me and shit. The valet knew me on a first name basis and it always sealed the deal. That's how much of a prolific stud that he is. Everyone knows him, okay? The valet knows him. And that's the only thing that at least for a woman, would take notice of is the valet. For women, the valet thing is more of a security measure than like a, ooh, valet knows him, great. This is actually his car. He's at least most likely who he says he is because valet knows him. Like this person's hopefully not gonna kill me because valet knows who he is. Does that make sense? Anyways, fast forward a couple hours and this girl's back at my place with her skirt around her torso. But as things begin to blossom, the aroma of salmon that's been left out in the sun all day starts to fill the room rather quickly. Like, so thick I could taste it. Hard no! Personally, I think this story is way faker than the last one. He goes not only into detail about the woman and how he met her, but he goes into detail about the staff knowing him, everyone seeing him with all these different girls because he has to remind you that he's a player. It's like, oh my God, they didn't say anything. They're all coming up to me to say hi. The valet knows me on a first name basis. No one said anything because you know, boys will be boys. <laughs> I know what you're trying to do when you're trying to build yourself up, probably trying to add more credibility to yourself, not necessarily your story, but that's what's making it seem fake. Does that make sense? Russell, am I getting through to you? I get the vibe from some of your stories that you took one creative writing class in college and the professor put nice world building on one of your papers and you never let it go. This next one is my favorite because all the story is, the whole story, he met a woman, brought her home, and she didn't want to suck his dick. I'm calling this one the lockjaw showstopper. That's it. But of course, he can't let you know that this gorgeous woman didn't want to suck his dick. No, he has to tell you a whole story about why she couldn't suck his dick and why that's a hard no. So I'm walking my dog Max out on Hollywood Boulevard. And by the way, guys, if you want a wingman that's like way better than your boys, having a little puppy will pull more girls than you ever could. I'm telling you. He talks about using his dog to get women a couple of times in some of his videos. This one I can't remember in particular, but he's talking about how he was at a party or something talking to a group of girls and one of his lines to get her back home with him is like, yeah, I have this really cute dog, Max. You should come home with me and come see him. And that always gets them home. They love to see Max. Russell, I know you're lying because the first thing that every girl learns is that you never go with the creepy guy who says he is a puppy. So we're walking along and we come across a Ukrainian girl who's also walking her dog. And you know, when they when the dogs cross paths, you know, they're like, kind of, I don't know, sniff each other, whatever. And during that time, it allows for the adults to kind of sniff each other or whatever. But in this particular one, he is talking about bringing his dog out on Hollywood Boulevard, and he bumps into this super hot Ukrainian woman who also has a dog. Now, obviously he can't just tell you that like, oh, the dogs were talking to each other. No, he has to tell you specifically what they did, how they crossed paths and were sniffing each other. And like, oh no, we get to sniff each other, you know? Like we get to do that because our dogs are busy, so we might as well be busy too. He can't just tell you that she's European. No, he has to tell you she's Eastern European and how Eastern European women are just more sexually liberated than American women. I'm kind of excited because I don't know if you guys know this, but Eastern European girls are way more sexually liberated than American girls by far. I'm talking back door on the first date, boys. Holy generalization, Batman. Now the next day, he invites her over so the dogs can have a play date. So we put the dogs in my bedroom, we go back to the kitchen where I just pick her up and put her on the counter and it's on. He can't just tell you he put the dogs in another room, he has to tell you specifically he put them in the bedroom and then he brought her back into the kitchen and then he helps her to her knees and then progresses for exactly 0.85 seconds or whatever the fuck he said. No, my jaw, I can't. And things proceed for about 0.5 seconds. And she's like, oh, my jaw, I don't want to. And we conclude on the fact that it's not that she didn't want to suck his dick, it's that her jaw hurt. Hard no! Because no one would pass up the opportunity to suck Russell's dick. The way that I know that Russell is lying in some of these stories is that he does have some where he is doing far less embellishment and he has far less details to his story. Specifically where he's not talking about stories about women, but he's addressing men like, hey, here's how you do this. Some of those do seem legitimate. In those, he's much calmer. He's much more direct. It's much more believable what he's saying because he's just more sure of himself as he's talking. And wow, that light's gonna bother me. It's actually some nice lighting there. Here's a clip that he uploaded from what I believe was one of his classes that he did before his class stopped or shut down or whatever the heck he did before he move on to online courses only. You don't want to have an affordable car. You want to be able to afford a Lamborghini. Right, right. That's a big difference. Mm -hmm. You don't go, oh, well, yeah, you know, economic value. If I, if I get a raise next year, I'll be able to get a car that gets better gas mileage and then I'll be able to commute to work even better. That's fuck insane, mm -hmm. you know? You are, all of you, all of us are gonna die soon, mm -hmm. real soon. And why wouldn't you want to be like, I want to be around the, around, on a yacht around the Cayman Islands with beautiful women in my life. 
If you don't think that that's a possibility in your life ever, you'll never get it. Now, sure, you can argue like, oh, this is a different setting. He's not talking the same because this is a course he was teaching. Sure, maybe, but you can see in the way that he's talking that he is still emphasizing certain things. He's still being like direct about certain things, but what he's not doing is he's not laughing and smiling and trying to convince you that he is so fucking cool. He is so real. This is a totally real story. These super hot Ukrainian girls love me and want to suck my dick, but they can't because of lockjaw. If all of his stories were delivered like this, it'd be way more believable. He has multi-episode things like this as well, talking about topics like this, where he does have little stories in there about women that he's been with. And those are much more condensed, much more compact. He's not smiling the entire time and trying to tell you what a big fucking baller is. He's talking about relationships he's had or women that he's hooked up with, but he's much calmer and much more direct as he's doing it. Those ones, I believe. He did a five part story about how he turned down a Sports Illustrated model. Why? Because in his own words on their first date, she was nervous and talking too much and then ate too much in front of him. He starts some of his stories or ends some of his stories with, and we're still friends. She's, there's photos of her on my Instagram. She still follows me on Instagram. She's probably gonna see this. Like, I don't know if that's him trying to add to his own lore. Like, I'm so cool. Like, it doesn't matter how I treat these women. They still love me. They still wanna be hang out with me. I still have all these women around me. I'm assuming that's it, but I don't know like what it adds in the context of the story. For the SI model, he can't just tell you that he turned down an SI model. He has to tell you how he met her, how he was hooking up with a 24 year old. And then she knew that it was her because that was her friend. And then the build up for why they were gonna agree to go to date, where they went to go date. He specifically takes time to tell you where they went, Earth Cafe, and not only that, but how it's laid out and the type of restaurant that it's laid out like. He used to tell you about how she ate so much food and how she got like three entrees and she ate everything. Side note, in her defense, model diets are fucking weird, dude. That could have been her cheat day. You don't know. <laughs> okay, she ate too much on the day. I was done. No, there's a follow-up one talking about how not only did he break it off, but she kept texting him. He didn't respond. And then he found out from one of their mutual friends that, oh yeah, she was obsessed with you and started going around and hanging out at all the spots that she knew he frequented because she was trying to see him. It's not enough that you turned down a Swords Illustrated model. No, she is to now be obsessed with you to sell the story bullshit. He has a whole series about dating models in LA. What it's like dating models in Hollywood? Part four. I used to see this Russian girl, tall, skinny like a fawn, beautiful. I mean, Russian girls are like, descendants of gladiators. I mean, they're absolutely gorgeous. And he specifically talks about this Russian girl he was dating or in a relationship with, who was a model, who would have all of these guys funding her lifestyle, take her to expensive meals, and then at the end of the night she would say, hey, take me home, and then give them his address so that she could go to his house, put leftovers in his fridge, and then get naked as she was going to spend the night with him. I'll suspend my disbelief because you seem very sad in this. And that relationship went on like that for a while. I just didn't even ask anymore, I didn't care. From watching a bunch of your videos, Russell, that whenever you say that's the name of the game or that's how the game is played, anytime you mention the game, you seem very sad. Like there's this moment where like your voice cracks or you seem like, huh, that's just, you gotta tell yourself that's how the game is played. And it's like, oh, okay, this girl broke your heart. He mentions now Russian girls are sometimes cold, but she was a stone cold killer, whatever. Ultimately that relationship ended because she came knocking on my door one night at like 2.30 in the morning. She was sloppy drunk and I had another girl in my bed and she's like, can I come in? I'm like, it's not a good time. She was like, do you have another girl in there? I was like, yep. But the ending can't just be like, oh, we just grew apart. We stopped seeing each other. She got bored of me. I got bored of her, whatever. No, it has to be that he was the stone cold killer to the stone cold killer of a woman. So she came over one time and he had another girl over and that was the end of it. I don't believe you. <laughs> In conclusion, I think Russell Hartley embellishes at least a good deal of his stories about women, if not outright lies in them. Typically when I make a video like this, I usually leave the door open for the person that I'm talking about or persons to reach out to me like, hey, if you wanna talk about this, if you want me to interview, like let's do something. And usually I end up blocked, that's fine. But I'm not gonna do that this time, Russell. I have a proposition for you. I'm bisexual, I'm into women, and I'm terrible at flirting. So why not put your teaching skills to the test? You and me, one-on-one -on -one video session. Let's see how you can actually handle teaching someone how to talk to women. You can live stream it so you can say I didn't fuck around with the editing at all, or if it would make you more comfortable, I'm sure I could get a group of creators together to take your class about how to be better at talking to women. Let me know, the choice is yours. But that's gonna be it. Have you seen any of Russell's TikToks on your For You page? Have you seen any other pickup artists on TikTok? Have you ever met any pickup artists in real life pre-pandemic? Hell, or any hitting you up post-pandemic? Sure, they're all getting practice sliding into DMs right now. Let me know, comment down below. Once again, shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting my Patreon. If you'd also like to support me on Patreon, link be listed down below. If you'd like to follow me on my social media, that'll be all up here, and that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day, goodbye.
I wouldn't get your hopes up. I'm fairly certain Russell is just gonna block me. Cardno! Thank you, Adam, Alan, Elise, Brighton, Beyond, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, Don, Elliot, Aaron, Essen, Evan, Exo, Feckless, Jason, Hopeless, John, M, Jonathan, Jordan, Joseph, Kenneth, Kevin, Kevin, Kim, Kristen, Lee, Lisa, Logan, Manga, Matt, Matthew S, Me, Lord, the Red, Michael, Michael, J, Nathaniel, Pat, Prylock, Rob, Robert, Ross, Sam, Simon, Stephen, Timothy, Tom, Victor, Wendy, Williams, Andre.